Discovering hidden secrets is usually one of the most fun parts of a game, aside from beating up your enemies and getting sweet rewards. Even when they aren't exactly well hidden, you still can't help but pat yourself on the back for a job well done when you find something that you didn't necessarily have to, but rather did because of a combo of your skills and desire to search every possible area and unlock every possible thing. But sometimes the things you get out of this kind of suck. Many items are a good idea in concept, but in practice turn out to be a lot less useful and cool than they were first thought out to be. Even if said reward is powerful, it can quickly turn out to be useless in the wrong circumstances, or if you've finished enough of the game that there's no longer a real purpose for it. While these secrets can be a fun surprise, you may find yourself wishing you'd never discovered them in the first place, because they ultimately fall a bit flat. I am Kirsten Ria from What Culture Gaming, and these are 10 video game secrets you are better off not finding. Number 10. Fake Crash Crash Team Racing Crash Team Racing was and is one of the most fun and challenging racing games of all time. As such, it also came with some suitably wonderful rewards, one of the best of which was unlocking the boss of the cup you'd beat as a playable character. Or at least that was the case with four of the cups, netting you Ripperoo, Papu Papu, Komodo Joe and Pinstripe Patoro to play. And so naturally you expect that the fifth and final cup will give you the big boss and Nitro's Oxide himself. After painstakingly racing to the best of your abilities, you finally beat the cup and, filled with excitement, finally get your reward of fake Crash as a playable character? Wait, what? As it turns out, developers initially intended to provide Oxide as a playable character, but ultimately struggled too much with making his larger cart not totally break the game, and thus eventually opted to swap him out with fake Crash. In the remake, this was given a quick fix by resizing Nitrous Oxide and his cart into a more manageable size and making him a playable character. It took a fair few years for this redemption arc, but it's one that's likely soothed a lot of old-time fans. Number 9. Pre-order items – Fallout New Vegas Although it's not an exact science, chances are if you get items with a pre-order game, at least one of them is going to be incredibly useful. That's sort of the point of an in-game pre-order bonus, something that either saves you grief or makes you feel just a little bit more cool as a reward. In Fallout New Vegas, this is half true, because you get some decent stuff from the get-go – armor, extra super stim packs, and some decent weapons. However, these items came with some issues, because it was officially considered DLC. Now this wouldn't have seemed a big deal, but New Vegas wasn't made to let DLC interact with one another, meaning that your armor and weapons couldn't be affected by any perks related to DLC. While this isn't the end of the world, it also wasn't something that's clear until you realize it for yourself, at which point you're kind of annoyed that this wasn't sneakily mentioned to you at some point. Number 8. 100 Lives – Super Mario 64 It's not exactly a hidden secret that after getting 100% completion on Super Mario 64, you can get a sweet cannon right up to the roof of the castle to meet everyone's favourite green lizard Yoshi. There you are given a very kind but entirely useless gift – 100 lives, which is more than you'd ever need to finish the game. Only you kind of already have finished the game. In fact, you've gotten everything you could have. Though it's cool to have a reward for your tireless efforts as a little red plumber, you also can't help but think it's sort of a hollow one, because it doesn't really serve a purpose. It's a fun moment, but also one that leaves you half expecting another area or something to throw those lives into, instead of them being the entirety of the fun surprise for having totally completed Super Mario 64. Number 7. The Stone of Agony – Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Stone of Agony is either a super useful item in the original Ocarina of Time or the most useless, depending on whether you had a fully kitted out Nintendo 64 or not when you played it. Obtained after gathering 20 gold Skulltula tokens, the Stone of Agony would allow you to find secret grottos you could bomb to find secret areas and items, so it was incredibly useful, so long as you had a rumble pack, because you would only be clued in by this vibrating. If you didn't have one, then you were plumb out of luck, because it didn't work in any other way, making this convenient item entirely useless for the entire of your run, and leaving you wondering exactly what the stone thing you got would have revealed to you. This would naturally be correct in the 3DS remake, as the Shard of Agony instead visually clued you in when a grotto was nearby, potentially helping people who played the original realise just what it was that it was supposed to do in the first place. Number 6. Joe Musashi – Shinobi the 2002 Shinobi is a game that you're unlikely to be able to race through unless you're an experienced pro. It's not impossible by any means, just the combo feature requires you to learn the nuance of the game in order to avoid getting your ass handed to you. Only there is a way that you can play the game with a slightly easier mechanic by unlocking Joe Musashi. The original protagonist of the series, Joe is a hidden playable character who comes with the very useful ability to spam shurikens at your enemies. The issue with this is how you unlock the original Shinobi, because as a secret reward, 
board, Joe can only be played after you get 40 Obordo clan coins. And said coins aren't exactly abundant, meaning you'll have to more or less finish the game and finish some stages on hard in order to unlock Musashi, at which point his easier shurikens aren't all that helpful, because at this point you've had to adapt, survive and overcome anyways. He does look cool though, so you know, not an entire loss. Number 5. Izanagi no Okami Persona 4 Izanagi no Okami is the persona most people imagine is the most powerful in Persona 4, as it's the ultimate persona of the main character, and you can only get it in your party properly after getting the game's true ending and playing New Game Plus. Sounds complicated? Then strap in, because the wild ride does not stop there. In order to summon Izanagi in this second playthrough, you also need to be a high enough level to summon them. How high a level, you ask? Level 91. So it's gonna be a good while before you can then. In short, if your only motivation for replaying the game was to see and use this cool new persona throughout it, you're plumb out of luck, because you can only still get it by more or less the end game unless you grind an insane amount for the extra levels. And while it'd be undeniably cool to steamroll your way through a second playthrough of the game, it doesn't seem quite worth all that stress, especially when plenty of other powerful and badass personas exist for less trouble. Number 4. Thunderclap – Rise of the Tomb Raider Thunderclap is one of the most badass weapons in not just Rise of the Tomb Raider, but also pretty much any Lara Croft game. It's a double barrel shotgun, so immediately, cool points there. And also one of the most powerful weapons in the game, which also helps. But in all fairness, it needs to be cool to make up for the fact that it's otherwise basically useless. But how can such a strong weapon be useless? Well, because of when you are gifted such a thoughtful and well-intentioned present. Namely, that you get the weapon as a reward for 100% completion of the game at which point you've sort of killed everyone you needed to, making this elite gun a bit of a waste. On the plus side, you can use the weapon on chapter replay and score attack, or just go fight a bear or something, but it's not quite the same as getting to blast your way through a bonus area, or getting a new game plus mode where you can wreck shop with your new toy. Number 3. Borden – Urban Rain If you want a beat-em-up that feels nostalgic even if you've never played it before, Urban Rain for the PlayStation 2 is a pretty safe bet. And if you have such strong vibes with you that you manage to S-rank every mission, you find yourself with an unusual reward. You unlock playing as Mayor Borden, the main villain and final boss of the game. Although Borden has a gun, he's basically more or less useless, as his stats pale in comparison to others and he doesn't really have anything to set him as uniquely useful in any way. This makes total sense in the frame of the plot, as the mayor isn't exactly expected to be a fighting pro like the others, but still marks him as pretty useless. Well, it's a neat reward for making the game your new pet, it's also one you'll quickly find is absolutely unmistakably useless. Unless you fancy trying to get S ranks again with an even worse character, of course, but at that point it might just be worth getting a new game, because you've done literally all you can in it. Number 2. Bonus Play – Lord of the Rings – The Return of the King Ok, so we should all have learned at this point that video games that tie into films are often perhaps not the most innovative or well-made games, often because they're rushed in order to capitalise on cinema success. But Lord of the Rings Return of the King wasn't a bad game by any means, even if it did occasionally give off this vibe. After all, you do get some epic battles as Aragorn, and that is a pretty easy way to make a game worth playing. And what makes the game worth replaying is that when you finish it, you can replay the levels again with any of the main team. This sounds like a lot of fun, but in practice it's a little more confusing. As it turns out, these levels weren't properly changed for different characters, meaning if you play as anyone but the intended individual, the game gets a little wild on you. The character you've picked either just won't show up or will hang out in the background in cutscenes, with the invisible first character speaking all the dialogue still. In short, while it's a really nice idea for a bonus feature, it's one that maybe we would have been better leaving out, instead of serving as a surprise that gets increasingly surreal the more you try it. Number 1. Easy Mode – Mega Man Legends Having easy mode in a game is something that many of us don't think about, enjoying the sweet suffering of dying a million times in a difficult game instead, but it's a fairly crucial thing to include. After all, there will be players who simply struggle with certain games too much to get through sections, and while it's fun to get good, there also ideally should be allowances for those who don't care about masochistically suffering to finish a game. But many video games are often without this, for an assortment of reasons. Still, weirder than not including easy mode was Mega Man's Legends decision, which was to give you easy mode when you beat hard mode. Mode. The reason this is insane barely even needs to be talked about, because only accessing easy mode after beating hard mode is the game equivalent of having to run before you can walk. At most, it could work if you plan to let a younger sibling or child play the game after you've expertly beaten it, but otherwise it makes literally no sense to have a way for struggling players to play Mega Man be hidden behind a mode that needs you to be even better. 
If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click that subscribe button as well as hitting that little bell icon to be notified of any new videos coming your way. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rear from What Culture Gaming, and I will see you in the next video.